Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to save database objects like forms and reports as text files in Microsoft Access. So you can save a form as a text file, send it to someone else like in an email, then they can load it back up into their database and voila, there's a copy of your form. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's take a look at one example. Today's question comes from Andrew in Huntsville, Alabama, one of my Platinum members. Andrew says, a coworker and I are working on the same copy of a Microsoft Access database, but he's in a different location. And I added the copy of a, because Andrew and his coworker friend, they're, they're, they work for the same company, but in two different cities. And they're using the same database, but not sharing data. So they want to work on the same, basically the same database that does the same job for both of them, but they each have their own set of data, but they want to be able to share the front ends. My company has strict policies that only allow us to send text files from our computers, no attachments, no FTP, and we can't even use thumb drives. I've tried zipping the file and renaming it .text, but they still catch it. We're not breaking any company rules. My boss even said it's okay. However, it's up to us to figure out a workaround since the IT guys are of no help. Of course they aren't. IT guys hate Microsoft Access. They hate Access with a, with a passion. I don't know why, but they do. Is there anything you can think of? We make little changes to forms and reports every now and then, and we'd like to be able to share them. Yeah, of course. So what you can do, Andrew, is you can take an object or all of your objects if you want. You can save them as text files, literal, literal.txt files. And you can either send those files as attachments if you're allowed to, or you can just copy and paste the text itself into an email and send it. Let me show you how. Before we get started, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, you're going to need to use a little VBA. How little? One line of code will do it. One to save and, of course, one to load. We're going to put a little couple extra little things in there. But if you haven't programmed in VBA before, go watch this video. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. You'll find a link down below you can click on. Go watch that and come on back. All right, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. But if you watch my intro to VBA video, you know that already. All right, so let's say I'm working on my customer form and I made a couple changes and I want to send it to Captain Kirk, right, on the Enterprise, but I have to send it by text, right, because that's the only thing that goes, that's the only thing that transmits through subspace. Okay, <laughs> all right, so on the main menu, let's use this button here, design view, and I'm going to repurpose this button. Let's call this save as text, okay, and here's my little status box. If you don't know how the status function works, I covered that in the video where I build this guy. I'll put a link to that video down below as well. All right, so right click, build event. That'll load up my code editor. And I'm right down here in my hello world button click. We don't want a status hello world. We're gonna save the file here. Now, how do we do it? Well, we're gonna use the command save as text space. Here's a list of all the different things you can save as text. Lots of stuff, tables, queries, uh, forms, reports, database property, all kinds of stuff in here. All right, but for today, we're just gonna focus on forms. The two big things that people always wanna send back and forth are forms and reports. So AC form, all right, comma, what is the name of the object? Well, let's do customer F, that's my customer form. And then a file name, where do you wanna save this file to? I'm just gonna save it on my desktop. There's the folder, right? C users, amaker, don't ask. Desktop, customer F.txt, that's where we're gonna save that file. When we're done, that's the one line that you need. When we're done, I'm gonna say status. That's my little status box, right? Customer F saved, and then give me a beep. All right, save it. Come back over here, close it, save it, close it, whatever, open it up. And let me close this window, get you out of the face. All right, ready and go. All right, customer F saved. Let's go to our desktop and see what we got. Now, look at that, customer f.txt. Let's open this guy up. Let's see what we got here. And look at that. There you go. There's all the stuff that Access needs to recreate that form in text format. I don't recommend making changes to the text. All right. It, it, you can easily mess things up and then it won't rebuild correctly. Okay. But there you go. There's how you save it as a text file. Now, you can just send that text file or you can, you know, you can select all this text and put it in an email if you want to. All right, now how do we load it back in? Well, design view, 
let's copy this button, right? Copy paste. Let's slide you up here. And we'll go load text. All right. Or load it's load from text is the command. Load from. Let's keep them let's keep them the same. Give your, your button a good name. I forgot to do it with this one because it's hello world button. That's fine. Change it obviously, or Alex will yell at you. All right. Load button or whatever you want to call it. Right click, build event. Very similar to this one. I'm gonna just copy that. Come down here and let's paste it in. All right. And instead of save as text, it is load from text, same stuff. AC form, customer F, file name. Okay. And in fact, for this, let's do this as, let's just call it customer 2F, just so you can see they're different. All right, customer F loaded. Okay. Always good to throw in a debug compile once in a while. Close it. Open it up. Get out of my face. <laughs> and let's load it up. And there it is. Customer 2 popped right over here. Look at that. Copy of it. Same. It's a beautiful thing. It's that simple. Now, of course, at this point, people always ask me, well, can you make a drop down box that has all the forms in it? I could just pick one or all the reports, whatever. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You can. I've already covered that in this report list box video. In the in the free video, I show you how to make a list box that's got reports in it. And you specify which ones you want to have in there. Then you click the print report button. It opens it up, blah, blah, blah. In the extended cut for the members, I do teach you how to loop through the different reports in the database in code. So you can loop through all of them. You can exclude the system reports, any system objects. And... Um, and the same technique works for forms. It's, all, it's nearly exactly the same thing. So if you want to learn how to do that, then go watch this video. Members only, of course. See, I got so many videos. On my, I got hundreds of extended cuts now. There's tons of stuff. Your membership is well worth it. And if you like this stuff, if you like learning with me, come and check out my developer lessons. I got hundreds of hours of those too. I've got like 43 levels of developer classes, and a lot of them are like three hours long. So there's lots and lots of stuff to watch. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. And I want to add as a disclaimer, Andrew, that uh, I, I don't tell anyone this as a way to uh, bypass any corporate rules or regulations you guys may have. But uh, if you are indeed using this and, and you've gotten approval from your boss already to just be able to send, you know, a, a report or a form object back and forth, then I, I certainly encourage that. This is also good for version control, too, because if there are any changes, you can export um, the, your different objects in your database as text files. And then you can very easily just look at that text file and see if there are any changes. And if there are, then you'll know which objects have changed. In fact, back when I was building my access updater database, right, this guy, this is used so that if you've got, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 users on your network all using the same database, if you update your developer copy, you can push out a new front end to everybody with one click. And I originally thought of using a text-based method to do this. So if you changed a form, it would just push out just that form. And then the local front end would pull that form in and read the text. But I decided it was easier just to push the whole front end ACCDB file out to everybody. It was just, it was just cleaner. Um, but obviously that requires being on a local area network. And for what you're doing, Andrew, you can only use text because you guys are in two different locations too. But I'm not trying to help anybody break the rules, but that's how you can share those forms and reports and stuff. All right, that's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. 
and you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. 
I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.